These guys are considered some of the most trusted and well-respected investors on Wall Street today. This isn't dirty money. A lot of this is just that the, they have access to things that we just don't know how to access. Do you want to follow somebody like Grant into a great real estate? Of course you do. Do you want to follow somebody like Buffett, Cuban, Gates, any of these guys into their big trades? Of course you do. If you're a trader, wanted to be a trader, want to learn about derivatives, puts, options, calls, squeezes. <laughs> you know, He's got it all down already. No, I will. You know why? Because when I commit to something, I'm going to learn how to yep. play the game. Hey, guys, I am so excited. I am so, so excited to be here and to announce our new partnership. I am now part owner with these two dudes. <laughs> Okay. You're one of our brothers. Yes, sir. Well, <laughs> we've always been brothers, but, but I'm so excited because uh, for, I don't know, two or three years, I've been talking to you guys now about kind of teasing out my offering to our audience, our big audience that is heavily invested in the stock market, by the way. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of you guys know how much I believe in real estate and sales and owning your own business. Uh, and you've heard me maybe be negative about um, investing in stocks only because I didn't know how to play the game. Many of you have come to me and said, look, you need to, to, to provide us with education so that you can become confident, independent, and financially free. The stock market is a, how big is that business? <laughs> oh. All stocks, in, just in the US. Trillions and trillions, trillions of dollars. It's not quite as big as the US debt. Right, grant. right, 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 right. <laughs> but close. it's getting close <laughs> yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, if you want to truly get wealthy in this country, and I posted this on Twitter last week, it's like, how could you be, how could you know about the next Jeff Bezos deal, Amazon, mm. the next Facebook deal, the Microsoft 40 years ago, Starbucks, yep. whatever, 40 years ago. If you could, if all of us could know, and these guys are the smartest, brightest minds on Wall Street today uh, about giving, getting you, they're, they're basically tracking data. Yeah. Yep. They're following data like I do on real estate. Mm -hmm. Who's selling? What do they pay? Can I buy it? that deal I just did yesterday? Yeah. You know, what, what did they, when did they buy it? <laughs> are they in trouble? I'm looking for, for distressed sellers. So you guys are in for a great ride. Uh, we want to, uh, is part of my mission to equip the community, our community here with tools and resources so that you can be confident and become independent and financially free. Uh, we're constantly evaluating areas where our clients uh, are demonstrating interest, and you guys have. Uh, we were at a conference. You guys were there with Growth Con. With, with, it uh, was killer. Arnold and Tyson, <laughs> and you guys were there. Uh, and you guys like told us over and over, dude, do something together with the Nigerians, okay? You guys have seen these guys with CNBC and Fox Business and for years. How long yep. y'all been playing this game? Uh, TV for <laughs> about 30 years, Grant. Yeah. Uh, 30 years. Because we were independent, we were able to go on TV and talk about what we were buying and what we were selling. But if you work for a big investment bank, they'll only let like one or two people from that bank, whether it's Goldman Sachs, yeah. Bank America, Merrill, or whatever. They'll only let one or two people talk. So the competition was between us and Goldman and J.P. Yeah, yeah. Morgan and that. So And when those guys go on TV, they got them on a short leash, too. Right? A little bet. bit as to what Absolutely. they can say or not say. Right. Well, yeah, we, we were have... wide open. We were able to say what we wanted to say. And it... It sort of surprised people a lot of the time. Matter uh -huh. of fact, we started, the most heavy start for us probably was 2007. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was at CNBC, that was Fast Money. And we talked about a lot of things that nobody had ever talked about on TV before. And what's going on in the options world, the derivatives world, and, and giving people a little bit of an understanding of, hey, you want to use leverage in this world? This is the place to be. Uh -huh. And so, uh, and we immediately started talking about the unusual option activity that's going on mm -hmm. that we see on a daily basis and what John and I monitor throughout the day every day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so Grant, when you look today, for instance, you hear about Roaring Kitty, you know, which is this guy that's saying, go on. And buy GameStop. <laughs> Go out there and buy AMC and things like that. Ouch. And you know, in some cases they do pretty well, but they don't really understand yeah. other than that they think it's a rigged game. A big hedge fund is short this stock. Let's all gang up on this guy or this gal and shove it where the sun doesn't shine uh -huh. and make a bunch of money. But yeah. you didn't learn anything other than just attack one stock. Right, and if right. we all act like one. Uh, giant shark instead of a bunch of little fish, we're going to do okay. We're more about educating people and saying, this is what you have to pay attention to, uh -huh. and you don't have to risk your whole net 
nest egg. Yeah, yeah. You know, you should have a portion of it in there. And as long as you understand how to invest properly, you can do it with less risk and you won't be on the wrong side of a roaring kitty when it reverses. Yeah. Well, look, I don't even know what a roaring kitty is. I, <laughs> I thought that was a porn star or something. Like, like, you know. From the 70s? I mean, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. But, but I do know about GameStock, okay? Mm-hmm. I know about AMC this week going up 100%. People are asking me, hey, man, did you invest in GameStock? I'm like, no, dude, I didn't. Because, and this is what I want you guys to know. Like, you can do that one time and get lucky one time. Exactly. But what are you going to do the second time? Yep. Like if you don't have an education, you don't know what you're doing and you just got lucky. It's like winning a lottery, okay? You're not you're going to be happy for a second, but you're going to realize a moment later, I can't win another lottery. So, we're going to create something here, Market Rebellion. We're literally going to create a rebellion across and I'm just going to name them out cuz I don't think you guys will. Please. The Swabs, the Fidelities, the State Streets. I'm coming after your asses, okay? You guys <laughs> offer terrible service, okay? People are bailing. Yep. Schwab, they're leaving yeah. en masse. Yeah, well, um, customers are leaving Schwab. Yeah, because and, well, because they're they're a great firm, but they've bought so many different pieces, Grant. And when you shove them all together to try to make one big company, they don't talk to each other. Yeah, so they bought they bought TD well, they Ameritrade, had Schwab, seven trillion. Yep, Ameritrade. Yep, TD, uh, they bought uh, Scott Trade, Scott Trade for billions of dollars. They bought Thinkorswim. I mean, all of these so different. If you guys companies. know any of these names? Maybe you're invested in these <laughs> Thinkorswim. <laughs> Thinkorswim, you're a customer there, right? Because I'm, I'm going to tell you something. We're going to do for you here. They've had some outages as well. With, I mean, yep. trying to get these things all to work together really that fast. Uh-huh. Uh, it, it is an unbelievable challenge, uh, and we've been seeing this go on for a long time because they keep. Keep on doing it. Now they're they're a great firm, as John said, but trying to get all of this information all into that same box, it's not working right, right. now. And they have outages constantly. And, and so customers are having a problem. Yes. Looking at their account, seeing their account, seeing where their trades are. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you imagine it's... coming into it? Sorry, John, but can you imagine coming in and all of a sudden everything you've got is down, and you're trying to figure out where you need to be, and you've, you're hearing about this Hello Dude, Kitty or whatever his can't name is, Rory <laughs> Kitty. <laughs> Hello, you know, and, and you wonder what your position is, and, and hey, I'd like to sell. Well, you can't sell because right now we're down. I mean, that's that becomes a major problem. Oh, my God. Yeah. So Imagine what, that. what we want to do, what I've done at Cardone Capital, is really provide a lot of care and support for our investors. We've raised a billion three there. We're going to do the same thing with this partnership. We're going to provide you with the kind of care and service that Schwab and Fidelity, because they've become enormous $7 trillion Schwab. OK, yeah. they're, they're, these are enormous companies that at some point lose the ability to actually take care of the customer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, customer service still matters. Yeah. It matters every time somebody calls here, um, calls Cardone Capital and, you know, your guys pick up the phone on that second ring. <laughs> yeah. If they haven't already yeah. 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 intuited yeah. that it's coming yeah. <laughs> before that. Yeah. Um, and it's customer service and giving people tools to help them right. um, rather than just saying, hey, this is the best we got. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Not only help them, but educate That's them. That's what I was right? going to say. That is the most important thing I think that John and I have always said since mm-hmm. the day we went to CNBC more on a full-time basis, but try to edu- educate people in something that's complicated, but you can actually bring it down to, to any level. Yeah. And just explain to people, how do you use options? How do the derivatives really work? When do I know what my mm-hmm. risk is? Risk is the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. You buy a stock, you have you have some pretty strong risk on, right? I mean, you do options. Now all of a sudden you've found leverage and you can figure it all out. Yeah. But you just have to understand that. Being long, being short, all those things. There's a big that that's a bit of a challenge, but you've got to educate people. And if yeah. they get the education, and, and, and get Schwab or, I, I had a Schwab account, I've had a Fidelity account. They've never sure. offered me an education. Right? <laughs> they offer me a phone number to call. <laughs> They'll hold my money, not pay me anything, but they've never said, hey, let me show you how to use this so you have confidence, okay? Right. So, so let's just talk about, you know, like Warren Buffett, okay? I hear mm-hmm. Warren Buffett say, and, and I, I'm a big fan of Warren and what he's done, but I hear him say that if he was an investor, he would buy ETFs and mutual funds. Mm-hmm. But then when I look at what he's actually doing, <laughs> he's actually buying options. He is. Yeah. So one of the things I've asked you guys in the past is like, why is he buying options, hmm. but not t- telling people to do something else? <laughs> and, then, and then why is all the smart money buying options? Right. Well, um, you know, Warren Buffett famously said, along with Charlie Munger, who his partner that just passed away, um, hey, options are a weapon of mass destruction. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know how to use them, he's absolutely right. 
if you know how to use them, like Mark Cuban does, like Warren Buffett does, like Bill Gates does, like Michael Dell does, all uh, these biggest investors. These are these are multi billion dollar biggest billionaires in the world. Billion dollar guys. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Why do they use options? A, they can define their risk. Uh -huh. So now you're managing your money instead of just kind of betting on Roaring Kitty. And I'm not putting Roaring Kitty down as much as I'm just saying, for him, it works. Yeah, yeah, for the yeah, people yeah, that yeah. get in early with him, it works. But if they don't have discipline, Grant, and if they don't have an education on how they should manage that money that they make, you know, they should probably take some of that and diversify over into real estate. Uh -huh. The more money you make over here in the stock market, why not be over there back in real estate uh -huh. and so forth? I mean, that's what you guys have been all about, and you've done a fantastic job. That's why we wanted to come over with you guys. Yeah, yeah. Because we said, otherwise you're only seeing half the game. If you're only in real estate or if you're only in stocks, you're seeing half the game. We can show you the whole game, and then you can be like those yeah. names we just mentioned. Yeah. So, but where do I start, or with the, the the viewer, where does they where do they start with even understanding like what's a derivative, what's an option, what's a put, what's a hold, what's long term, what's risk? Sure. Like I don't know what risk really means. Yeah, and all this comes down to the educational side yeah. of it, right? I mean, you have to start at the very beginning. Everybody coming in is going to say, well, what does that really mean? I'm yeah. long a call. What does that mean? That, well, we define you're, that. You're long a what? Long a call. Uh -huh, okay. And that, that, that is the equivalent. It's a share equivalent of 100 shares. Uh -huh. Now, that all being said, you have to know different strike prices, different months of expiration cycles. Uh -huh. Those are things that are a little bit complicated, but we can make those less complicated by educating people. And, and, and they can get themselves into this and understand it. Like Warren Buffett. Well, you know, Warren was so smart because a lot of the time when he gets into positions, new positions, he starts with options. And uh -huh. why does he do that? Well, because if it's stock, he's probably going to have to let, let everybody know what he's doing. He's got a file. He's got to do this. But you do the options, it's a little bit of a different thing. That's because, why because he likes he does, to position he in. He doesn't have to tell people what he's doing on options. Not with the options. Not though. until he gets to a, a certain, certain level, level of ownership, like 10%. Uh, which so would be? That's a big piece. I mean, so for instance, yeah, yeah. yesterday evening, Grant, uh, Warren Buffett announced through Berkshire Hathaway that he'd accumulated $6.7 billion worth of Chubb, a big insurance company. Well, today the stock jumps $25. I mean, you know, it's a fabulous. <laughs> and, you know, and, and he did that through options or he did, did it? Some of it through options, a lot of it through stock. Uh -huh. We don't know how much yet because he uh -huh. doesn't have to disclose it uh -huh. until he gets to 10%. And then, and it's not just Warren Buffett, it's anybody. Right, right, if you right, get 10% right. of a publicly traded company, you've got to declare. And then when you start selling it, you've got to declare as uh -huh, well. Uh -huh. So, uh, but up until a point, yeah, 9.99, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, yep. right. he, he doesn't have to tell anybody and then it triggers. Right. Yep. And so, so then, then it's too late. Yep. He, exactly. <laughs> right. But a lot of people will want to coattail on what Warren Buffett's doing. Uh -huh. And think about this as many great trades as he's made. The Oracle of Omaha. Yeah. Love him. Just a week ago, he did his big thing, uh, his uh, thing in Omaha, yeah. where he brings in 25,000 people. Yeah. Come see him talk about trading and investing and how he's managed their money if they own a share, just one share yeah. of Berkshire Hathaway. They can come to this meeting. Well, what he's done is he's also been very disciplined about taking losses. Yeah. Took a big loss in Exxon. Yeah, took yeah. a big loss in IBM. Uh -huh. Why does he talk about that? Because that's part of the game. Mm -hmm. You've got to cut your losses. Uh -huh. That's why we love options, because you can cut your loss a lot quicker with options than you can with stock. Uh -huh. Stocks go down, and you know he might have lost billions of dollars on some of his recent losses that he incurred for, again, IBM. Or um, there was something else he bought, and he said, "Man, this was a. I take complete responsibility yes. for it. I'm the one that decided to buy this, but I forget what I it was." I was trying to remember what it was. It too. wasn't IBM, and it wasn't, it wasn't Exxon, but no. So, you guys are looking for. Let me just go back to the education piece. How long is it going to take me to learn? If I'm committed to like, okay, I'm going to learn how to make a hundred grand a year in options mm -hmm. as an extra hustle. Mm -hmm. How long is it going to take me to learn? Well, I would say it depends a little bit on how much you're starting with. So, in other words, if you've got five thousand dollars, let's say I got five thousand, to turn that into a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. yeah. it's going to take you a little bit longer, unless time. you're just rolling no, no, the not, dice. Not, not how long is it going to take me to make a hundred? Right. How long is it going to take me to learn and to be confident about investing? Be like, I know what I'm doing now. I yeah. know, yeah. I know when to pull the trigger. I know when to 
when to fold them, and I know when to to, to go to go long on it. Kenny Rogers, I yeah, know yeah. when to hold them, when to I fold them. <laughs> yep. Oh, you well, sing now. Don't yeah. You? <laughs> no, I know. No. Oh, God. <laughs> Shout it to no when to fold them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think, Grant, within three or four weeks, you'll start understanding the basic risks. Uh -huh. And then probably at six weeks to three months, depending Man, on... Man, I, 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 I can't wait that long, bro. I want to know how to do that. <laughs> it <laughs> takes a little time, though, because there, yeah, there yeah. are so many elements that go into this yeah. whole thing. We so, call, so it, I, we call them the it? Greeks. The, the, Greeks? the Greeks, you've got deltas and thetas and all these other things. Oh my you've got God. to really but, understand. But you don't need to know what those are. You just need to understand how that works. How yeah. that works. So are you going to we give can me show somebody in just a couple weeks how that works? Yeah. yeah. Are you going to give me an example stock and say, oh, okay, yeah. you're going to go pretend money. Mm -hmm. Yep. You, do you use like monopoly yeah, money? Yeah. We, we, paper trading. Uh huh. Yep. Uh, paper trade. Yep. You just literally write the number down on a piece of paper and you say, here's the time that I'd like to buy this stock. Uh -huh. I think this stock is about to go up because similar to the squeeze, as they call it, that's going on right uh -huh. now in uh -huh. uh, GameStop and AMC and uh, Koss headphones <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Because of that squeeze, what might they squeeze next? Well, yeah, all yeah. these solar stocks have been trashed. Uh -huh. All these lithium stops, stocks have been trashed. That might be the next area they go after, the uh -huh. roaring kitties or whoever. Well, so I'm going to set myself up to start making money in those because they were What's way What's the up biggest here. paper trade that you missed? Oh, gosh, GameStop, like, uh, for sure, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when you look at it, it was, what, up 2,000%? I mean, that <laughs> thing, and I don't mean this time. I mean going back to 2021. GameStop, okay, just so I understand. GameStop is that company... GME, right? Yes. Yep. That had they, they were doing software games yes. years ago. Yeah. So what's the big? And they had a retail outlet. Yeah. That they'd basically sell you the games, yeah, um, yeah. and people could so go in and attraction? trade them. I, 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 what's the big? <laughs> what's the big? They just for this? what they do is the the Wall Street started started to really figure out. Hey, there's a lot of shorts going into this stock. Shorts All these people being shorts meaning to... somebody's selling the stock without owning anything, uh -huh. right? That's a short. So they're shorting the stock. They think this thing is going to zero, uh -huh. and it's getting pretty daggone close in some cases. A lot of these various names that you're talking about have gotten very close to zero. They're under a buck sometimes. Uh -huh. Maybe they're under four or five. Once they get under five bucks, that's when it gets pretty interesting, and uh -huh. you start to get those nerves start to get up. Because there, but... because somebody's got some bad news on it, sales or oh, the locations. bad news is out there, and we know. Know it's out there, but then somebody else comes out there and says, "You know what? Uh, Maybe not." There's so many shorts out there. There's too many shorts out there. Uh -huh. Was GameStop? Wasn't it like 150 mm percent? -hmm. It wasn't 100 percent. Sorry, words. They got a million shares. It wasn't a million shares that was short. 1 .5 they were 1.5 million short. There's only a million shares. Uh -huh. They're over the number. Uh -huh. So that creates an incredible squeeze if that stock starts to move to the upside, and that's uh, where the squeeze starts yep. to become and that's where reality. They, they act because like they're them. dumping the million the excess shares. Well, yep. what they have to do is, so Grant decides, I want to sell this stock. I think it's going to zero. It's at $6. Uh, I think it's going to zero. It falls to four. You think you're a genius. Now, a bunch of these roaring kitty guys all come after you, and they say, Grant's got $13 billion, because that's what one of these hedge funds has. On the short side, in other words, betting that it's going to zero, uh -huh. they've put money on the short side, they've sold the stock in hopes of buying it back cheaper. Now, all of a sudden, all these guys act as a bunch of ants, just pushing and pushing and pushing. Now the stock's back to five, then it's to six. And then Roaring Kitty puts out a tweet, and the stock jumps by 100%. That next day goes from six to twelve, and then it starts moving up to twenty and mm -hmm. thirty and forty and things uh -huh. like that. They're trying to crush that hedge fund. They're trying to force that hedge fund to buy back all of that stock. So, is this an investment? No, no right. that's a trade. But yeah, this is a trade. It's yeah. Definitely a trade. It's just a you're, trade. You're just, They're short, just, probably for the just, right reason. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you're you're shorting the stock because but too many is, people went short, right, and overshorted this uh -huh. whole thing. Yep. So, and, and, and not everybody can make it out to the front door. The, right. right. It's like you scream fire in a crowded got, got theater. It, got not it, everybody got gets it. out. So are you guys, so this is a very important point. You're not investing. You're trading. We're trading and action, investing. Action, yep. right? Yep. You're, in and that particular case, the short case, that's a totally different set of circumstances uh -huh. than a standard option trading thing that Which we would, would be, be doing. Give, give me a standard Standard option. would be, uh, hey, uh, Oracle has earnings coming up in the next two or three weeks, and so 
the company's fine. There is, there's very little shorts in this thing. It's not part of that. But somebody says, you know what? This is a good time of the year for Oracle. They're going to probably report something very good. You know what? We're going to buy a couple thousand options here and see if we aren't right about this move to the upside that we think is coming uh -huh. because of a catalyst that we, know, we all know about, its earnings or whatever it might be. That's what we normally do. Now, this short squeeze stuff, it happens a lot, but yeah. this, this has been an incredible time. Got another one for you. Yeah. Netflix. Okay. We all know Netflix. You know, you. I saw you and Travolta on stage. Yeah, you yeah, and yeah, Kevin yeah. Hart. Movie well, man. I know you are. He is a movie and I, I had to send you that when I yeah, saw yeah, that yeah. cash out movie. Dude, were you, and I saw so you and Travolta. What, what were you doing? You're watching it and you see the, <laughs> you see the plane. <laughs> I, I see your plane, and then yeah. I see uh, all the 10x flags yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm going, what? What? <laughs> right. And then he goes, hey. You like that 650, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meaning yeah. the G650, folks. Yeah. That was cash out with John Travolta. That that was a funny scene. That was great. He's a great guy. The guy understands. Pilot. But anyway, back yeah, to Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these people um, that want streaming media. Um, Netflix says to some of them, well, you know what? You're sharing your passwords. Tell you what, you can keep that, but if you want ad supported, you pay us what you were paying us before. If ad supported, meaning you have to watch an ad to see that show. On the other hand, you pay us another 10 bucks a month, you don't have to have it ad supported and all that. Uh -huh. Grant, that has gone up to 40 million people are now watching Netflix ad supported. Ad supported. They yep. would rather pay for the ad. They, well, they would rather uh, not, not pay not as pay, much, pay. and they can watch all this content, but they don't have to pay as much, but they have to watch an ad. Well, that, 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 well, suggests, that suggests that we cut consumer. Yeah. <laughs> well, and right? I agree. <laughs> I mean, And they've got a deal that they just signed with the NFL. Pete's our big sports guy, uh -huh. so he knows this. He but <laughs> on Christmas 2024, 20, uh, this Christmas, they're going to have two games um, on Christmas for the NFL. Uh, and those two games, Netflix just paid $150 million uh -huh. to put two games on. Are they going to be able to charge people more money for that subscription? No, but it's something that they're doing like the Tyson right. fight so, to enhance. Right, right. And the, and the Brady Plus roast. It, that was a new yep. thing. So this is good for Netflix? Or? I think it's great for Huge. Netflix. Yeah. So into um, this weekend, we were buying Netflix into the weekend because you're buying what you're buying an option calls call, call option a call yep. which means uh, the right to buy the stock at a certain price so a call if I understand this right is hey I like this stock yep I'm gonna own it anyway mm -hmm. long term mm -hmm. yep and the call is a cheap way to not buy the full what's it what's yeah, it it's a six hundred dollar stock yeah yeah so, so do you want to spend six hundred dollars for one share yep I can pay you could pay a couple hundred dollars and control that $600 stock for a week. Uh -huh. Or if you spend a couple thousand, you could control it for a couple months. Uh -huh. So the whole thing about options and, is... And, and I sell it when it gets higher. Yeah, like, like what's if this? you want to. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, yeah, it goes higher. doesn't mean you have to sell it, right? I mean, you might want to sell it. If it goes yeah, to well, two, just give me that example. If it goes <laughs> to $2 to $4, you what? probably should sell half. That's, a, that's always been our rule. Because if it doubles, take off half. You know what? I know, but all your money's off the table. But, but you guys got to explain it. Like, like, okay, <laughs> let's just do the Netflix thing. Okay, today Netflix so, is trading for what? Let's say it's trading at six hundred and fifteen dollars. Okay, six fifteen. And I think it's going to go up to six thirty by this Friday. And you're like, hey, I'm. Oh, well, that's not a long term hold. No, that's a lo not that's a long term. It's a trade term. though. But it's a trade. That's and a trade. That's what? a trade. God what? damn, dude. <laughs> What's the high for Netflix? Well, it's been as high as six hundred and ninety dollars, almost seven hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if but I now think you're it's predicting going... between now and Friday, dude. Yeah, like... but that's because options give you that flexibility. Uh -huh. I can trade very short term or I could invest longer term. Uh -huh. So for instance, Grant, right now I could buy the 615, the at the money call. Okay. Gives me the right to take it from somebody at 615 bucks a share. Let's say I buy that one year into the future. Yeah, good. So that's definitely good. an investment, okay. not a trade. Yeah. So I buy that. Now, um, a lot and, of people- And what, what point are we putting on that? Uh, well, like right now, and we're paying a couple thousand dollars for it's gonna those It's going to cost options. you money. It's going to cost you more money, a lot more money, because now you're buying time. You're yeah, buying yeah. one year in time. Yeah. So let's say so, I pay two grand for a year of time. Yep. 
Uh, yeah, and, and, let, and then it, let's say it, that it, a year it, from now, it doesn't get to 700, but it gets to 680. From 615 to 680 is all your profit. Uh -huh. You know, you make that $65 profit. Without investing. Without putting up any more money. Uh -huh. um, and you only could, you're only risking a small amount, not 615 bucks a share, but maybe just 20 or $30 right, per right, option right, that you right. purchased. Get this one, Grant, because I was kind of amazing myself with this. <laughs> oh Everybody God, always. <laughs> when you start amazing yourself, bro, that's He's it. only been well, around since 1981. How often does this happen, by the way, that you amaze yourself? Well, you uh, always uh, more and more often. <laughs> um, so I was looking at Netflix. Market cap is, uh, I think, six, uh, $280 billion. Hmm. That's how much the company's <laughs> worth right now. Disney is worth $165 billion. Uh -huh. You remember when Disney was going to buy Netflix? They should have. Apple should have bought that Netflix. That was a huge mistake. All, the, all these guys should have. Netflix was $50, million, $50 billion, and they said, it's too expensive. It goes to $100. It's too expensive. $150, too expensive. They could buy Disney. Netflix could flip it around and buy Disney if they wanted to. Uh -huh. So do I want to bet on uh, that leadership and that kind of model that everybody has a Netflix account? You uh -huh. bet I do. And, and now they're putting sports on there. Yeah. And now they're putting the WWE yeah. or UFC, like the guy that you interviewed on stage, yeah, you yeah, know, from yeah, the UFC. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody uh -huh. who's into sports loves Netflix. And is there anything in terms of return for anybody who wants to do it? I mean, when you look at what live sports, there's nothing that can compare to it. And that's why you, you all of a sudden have these games on Christmas, right? Well, do you think people are going to probably add The only way you can watch that game is on Netflix. You uh -huh. can't watch it on TV. You can't watch it um, Dude, I mean, on cable. Anybody Fox. that was thinking about canceling their Netflix account, they're going to hold it up. Canceling now. Yeah. So that's a good play. Yep. And for them to go, if they're a third of a trillion dollar company, mm -hmm. you know they want to be a trillion dollar company. Oh, yeah. Yep. And you yep. can't do that a subscriber at a time. You could do it by buying Disney. Right. Yep. Going back so in just one second, yeah, yeah. though, when you said to John, hey, one week, that's that's just, what, what is that? That's a trade. That is what we've become a little bit more and more. We're morphing into that over time is people now, because there are expirations, when John started, were the quarters? Yep, every quarter. Used to be every quarterly during the year. Then it every, turned every three months. Every three months. Uh -huh. Then it turned to months, right? Every month you'd, you'd go out. Then all of a sudden it became something even more and more and more. Now there are dailies, but there's wow. primarily there are week long op, op, uh, expiration cycles. Uh -huh. So we're seeing, and I would say right now, probably uh, of the options that we're seeing, if if they trade a hundred thousand in one particular stock, they're going to probably do fifty thousand of it in the first week, and then it staggers all the rest of uh -huh. them. People are there in front. They are trading. There's, there's very few investments. But there are investments out there when they come in those big chunky ones mm -hmm. that come deep in the money and then... The <laughs> <laughs> see, see what we should do, what we should do, okay? And guys, I'm going to be learning along with you. Uh, my team's going to put a, a landing page up. If you have interest in what we're doing at Market Rebellion, I am going to learn with you guys, okay? So literally, we're going to create an account for Grant. Cool. And we're going to start... They're going to basically maybe every week, hey, Grant, this is Grant's trade this week. Okay? Yeah. And this is, I'll use my own money and we'll track it <laughs> and, and see see if there's some winners and losers. But I can't learn this game without doing the game. It's like anything else. You guys played football. Uh, real estate is learned by doing the real estate. Yeah. Investing is learned by investing in the real estate. So there'll be a landing page right there. Put your first name, last name, your email address. We'll keep you in track of what we're going to do at Market Rebellion. Uh, if you're in a Schwab account, a State Street account, Vanguard, uh, Fidelity. Fidelity, you don't like the way you're being treated right now, hey, I am going to show you another way to invest your money, to create an account, to get an education. We're going to do some great things for the middle class. So you guys can start creating wealth and, and, and using some of these hacks that the wealthy are watching. Yep. Uh, you, you guys have both talked to me in the past about unusual activity. Mm -hmm. Okay, like these are Uf UFO activity. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, you know, I, I think about where's the money going? Mm -hmm. Like uh, follow the money. Yep. Talk to me about unusual activity and, and how we can educate the, the, our audience at Market Rebellion with Sure. Unusual activity. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we created an algorithm um, that we trademarked and everything called the Heat Seeker. And the Heat Seeker uh, basically is looking for large blocks of institutional buying. We call it the smart money. 
Why would it be smart? Well, because somebody's investing 20 million bucks. Um, do you want to follow somebody like Grant into a great real estate? Of course you do. Do you want to follow somebody like Buffett, Cuban, Gates, any of these guys into their big trades? Of course you do. Yeah. So what we're looking for, and a lot of times it's BlackRock, Blackstone, um, it's Bridgewater, it's any of these gigantic hedge funds that are buying big chunks of a particular stock. They you, might. You see that you see them buying. Yeah, and we don't know who they are. We, you don't know who. We yeah. just know the volume. There was is activity. Such, you can't. Yeah, that it's something happened. Yeah, either either Grant uh, just got an itch that he had to scratch, yeah. and he had to buy twenty million dollars worth of options. Yeah. yeah, or it's Bridgewater, or it's Stevie Cohen over at point seventy two, uh -huh. or any of these. You know, the guy that billions is after, and so forth. Um, all of these folks buy a lot of options. Very few of them sell options. Most uh -huh. of them are buying these options to get that leveraged bet to the upside if, it's, if they're bullish. Mm -hmm. And they do the same thing to the downside when they're bearish. In other words, they can buy an option that lets them sell a stock at a certain price, but they don't have to sell it. But they can sell it at a certain strike price. And those guys get rewarded huge. I mean, you know, Humana this year, uh -huh. stock dropped by nearly $100 in one day. Um, if you had an option to sell that stock, you could have really made a fortune by owning that put option. So it works both ways, so, so upside this, or downside. Yeah, is this something uh, the, the investors like looking at every day? They're, they're on their phone. They're on a computer. They got multiple screens. <laughs> a lot of them are. They're yeah. degenerates. Yeah. And I'd also. Are there I, any degenerates in this? Oh, oh, there's probably <laughs> some. But I would, yeah, I would yeah. say this, just going back for there's, a moment with the unusual side of things. When we see these big trades that come in, it's just like when we stood on the trading floor, right? Uh -huh. We would stand in the trading pit, size of this room, and people would come in and say, "Hey, I want to buy five thousand of these," and you sell it to them, and all of a sudden we've had the transaction, right? Now, these guys are coming in, and we're seeing this all come in through all these computers all around the country. I mean, we're talking about, we're averaging 47 million contracts per day in the options world right now. Wow. That's up 3 million from last year, which is up 7 million from the year before, which is up 4 million from the, all we've done since uh, going back to 2010, but particularly with the pandemic, it's taken off. Uh -huh. And so now people are a lot more interested in this whole thing. And I, I, do, I do think it's important to say, this isn't dirty money. This isn't necessary. I mean, it could be, but a lot of this is just that the, they have access to things that we have access to. We just don't know how to access. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. I mean, like yeah, if I so, wanted so, to look so into Mark, Cardone or whatever enterprises, I, if I've got enough people under my, you know, that are out there looking and doing things, they can kind of figure out, well, it looks like he's kind of positioning more in Texas than Florida right yeah, now. Yeah. Whatever. But and that's well, the you kind can, of thing. You can, that these there, there's all this data, dude. The data is right. everywhere. The data is looking like right. it's obvious. Like yeah. we're doing a deal in Fort Lauderdale, I find out the guy's selling this asset and another one 12 miles away. Mm -hmm. And as soon as these two get done, boom, there's this one. That's my neighbor. Yep. So like, <laughs> so you know it, but that's not game. dirty though. That's you just know no, that I, because I, that's I, what you do, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm seeing where the boats are going to catch the fish. Right. And it sounds to me yeah. that that's what that, you guys are doing. That's what we're I doing. like the way that's you put point. that, Grant. Yeah. Where the boats are going to catch. Well, the that's fish. why we signed say, to do it with I'm you. I'm a fisherman, right? <laughs> I'm in the boat, and, and and the GPS goes out. Like all my technology goes out. I'm gonna be like, well, why don't you guys just follow the fucking boats over there? They said that guy's. <laughs> that guy's. And by the way, they got poles in the in, in their bending. <laughs> And, and they're all having fun. And there's guys with nets. Yeah, and, and, and look, it looks like there's something happening yeah. as opposed to over here and there's nobody there. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there are about 7,000 stocks in the U.S. Yeah. How do you know which ones to trade? Seven are you going to trade the same stocks. seven? Are you going to trade Netflix, Apple, Google, Microsoft, yeah. NVIDIA? Are you just going to trade the so-called Magnificent Seven? Yeah. Or are you going to look for the ones that the smartest hedge funds in the world the smartest big investors in the world are trading right now. That's what we're looking for. Uh -huh. And like you say, I think that's very well said. I see a bunch of poles bending, yeah. you know, from these fishermen reeling in these big fish. That's where I want to go fish. Yeah. I don't want to go over here where the water's calm and there's no fish. Yeah. I want to go where the fish are. Yeah. That's By the, the way, smart money. When it comes to that, and, and we were talking about Roaring Kitty, and, and he does what he does. It's fine. Whatever. Roaring you know, Kitty is a person. He, he's a person that, okay. that, that has been a voice for the folks that are, you know, you know who like Roaring Kitty is? Yeah. Oh, fucking, these guys. I guarantee all these guys know. Fucking degenerate right here. <laughs> but what 
was going to say is this. So it's interesting because somebody else, David Portnoy, who's a yeah. fun guy and he, he's been a part of this whole thing and he's really done well in the markets. But, you know, he was saying the other day, he goes, I didn't get the call. And he was all mad, right? And he was kidding. He was yeah, joking yeah. around. But he's like, I didn't get the call. I didn't know GameStop was going to do this. Why didn't I get it? I'm not in the inner circle. And that made me think. Well, let's take a, little look, a real quick look back. And we looked back, and just a week and a half ago, before this whole big move, they were buying calls. They bought 5,000 more calls. They bought 5,000 more calls. You can see it. They're buying them at 11 and $12 strikes, not to get confusing, yeah, but yeah, basically yeah. stock went to 78 in the after hours, the highest print while it was in the regular hours, 65 bucks. Went from 11 bucks so, to 65 bucks. Yeah, so, so when it went to 11, so you're saying guys were buying calls? Yeah. Guys were buying calls. At six bucks. Very inexpensive calls at the time. There was stock was so somebody knew rough. something. Yeah, you went back. Somebody and sniffed they out took something. Uh, yeah, uh, it was probably so the Rory insider. Kitty. The insider trading <laughs> thing happens every day. Yeah, but, 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 but it's not always. Yeah, it's not illegal insider right. trading. Right. No, it's it's educated, intelligent. Follow the money. And if you're Roaring Kitty, yeah. so you know because you're Grant Cardone that five million people are paying attention to whatever you're saying on social. Because that's your social following, just on one yeah. platform, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, so all of a sudden you say, hey, instead of with real estate where it's much harder for the average person to get in there and race ahead of you on a hundred and fifty or two hundred million dollar it's impossible building. Dude. There's yeah. there's no liquidity in real estate. Right. Right. It's slow, it's boring money. I buy a deal. <laughs> Like you hold it for six years. I, and my audience wants some action. Yeah. Like yeah. I know there's people in my audience. I've had guys tell me, man, I like your little 6% return. I get a double every seven years. But, bro, it's boring. <laughs> and it is. My, my money's boring, dude. It's, it, it's a boring. It's a good boring. Very <laughs> heavy. You know, like you can't go build another one tomorrow next door. This thing, man, a guy could pick up 500 bucks a day. Yep. It once he becomes educated, mm -hmm. absolutely. Ahead, I didn't mean to interrupt you, nope. but, but it is a, it is a much more yep. active game. And who is the likely buyer of those calls Pete was just talking about? GME is the symbol for GameStop. So who were the people buying when the stock was eleven bucks? Because it's been between ten and eleven bucks for over a month. Uh -huh. And who were the people buying there? One of them could have been Raging Kitty or Roaring Kitty. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Whatever. Probably wasn't. <laughs> but could have been him or one of his friends that decided, you know, I think you're right. I think I'm going to buy a bunch of these calls. Gives me the right to buy it at 11 bucks. When that thing goes to 20, that guy's off like a prom dress. Uh -huh. I mean, he is taking profits uh -huh. right now. Um, because he's saying, you know, this is a fabulous trade. I just I'm confident that hadn't happened for him in a long time. <laughs> His last problem was a little while ago. Oh, yeah. It's been a little while so, since. So, so 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 when this thing goes from 11 to 65 mm -hmm. or 20, yep. right on the way up, he's selling. That guy is probably the one selling to all of these other people that are just flooding in at that moment. Because his eleven dollars is worth what now? To him? So the like, is he getting some? He, he just made he just doubled his money. So if he had a million dollars on that trade, he turned it into two million. The now, very next day. Does he trade. regret not waiting for it to run to sixty? I'm sure he does. Probably. I'm yeah. sure he does. But, but that's okay. He still did well. Yeah. Right? And well, then, now he's going to go hunt another something. Yep. Another yep. something. And now so he's looking Blackberry. for what now, else is short. Now, what is the influence of this going forward? As you guys are telling me this, I'm thinking about the ten thousand baby boomers. And some of you guys might be baby boomers are getting close there right now, retiring from the mm -hmm. workforce. And our life gets extended. Now I'm living till I'm 93 or 103 or whatever they're threatening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> threatening. <laughs> and, and I could still trade, though. Oh, yeah. Okay, I might not be able to play golf or ski or nobody wants to hire me, but I could trade. Yep. The, the, Click right? on that mouse, right? Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> it's, I mean, so maybe we, we create a, like... Like a super intelligent tens of millions of, of yeah. baby boomers <laughs> that can trade options in the future. Oh yeah, and if you looked at it, I would create say create a new wealth class. Yeah, a certain amount of the folks that are fifty to eighty are going to trade longer term. Most of them, but some of them are going to want to get that quick rush that you get because I'm telling you, the endorphins pop. Just like you just yeah. had a great workout. I'm, I bet, bro. Yeah, I mean, we'll it's call them like, the geriatric traders. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's Market like a rebellion with the geriatrics. <laughs> well, but you now get, you I can't get a hard one anymore, that. but you can get a good trade done. <laughs> well, but think about this: all those 
people that are you know, big fans and that are learning about real estate and really how to manage their business better and all the rest from you guys, all those folks that are 25 to 35, they're going to be more in the shorter term trading. Yeah. Some of them will invest, but I bet only 20% of it will be investment. 80% of it will be trading, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I had a guy on the phone yesterday. Get, he's like, I'm going to put $250,000 in your deal. Mm -hmm. He's like, but I got to keep some cash. He has got a million dollars in cash. I said, dude, give me the whole million. Just put the whole million in, right? He's like, nope, I got to trade. I have to save some money for trading. Oh, yeah. I like this yesterday. Guy. I said, like, what, dude? What are you going to trade? He's like, I'm going to put 5000 bucks in Apple. I said, bro, it's at, what, 380 or something? Um, It's 180, 180. 100. 180. I said, it's got to double. It's got to go from 190 to 380 This is a great example. Yep. It's got to go from $190 a share to 380 for you to get a double. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, man, I just like the action. <laughs> I want the action. Mm -hmm. He would be better to buy a call. Yep. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. Am I getting this right? Yes, you are. Yep. Yep. And and he would pay, because $5,000 would get him like, what, uh, 200? No shares, shares at all. No, no shares yeah. at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But a call, he could get how many shares? He could he could for control 5, a thousand bucks. shares of Apple for See? that same five grand. And he's a long-term holder anyway. Yep. yep. Right? Is that right? Yeah, he probably yeah, depending is. Depending on if he, if, if, yeah, depending if he's the longest term holder, uh, other than probably uh -oh, Steve this Jobs' this is family. A, this is a bad. He is bad one of the longest term. <laughs> you no, know, I've held it from one price. Uh, I think originally it was like three or four bucks when I bought it, and that was pre every split that's happened since or something. Like and that. now it's split three or four times at least. Not because I'm smart. It's all on my wife. I give her all the credit in the world. She goes, "Look, you ought to buy this Apple company. It's going to be big." And I'm like, "All right, I'm in." He's yeah. a Berkeley guy. We had ties to Cal. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you've owned <laughs> that. Jobs. You've owned that how long? Since 1993, I think, or something like that. Wow. And I remember. You don't, he, so you don't do the calls and options on Apple. Oh, I sell calls against it all the time. Yeah. And collect because now he does what you do. Yeah. See, you can do that. For for those people again, 50 to 80. You let's say. You got this say. very liquid position now in this stock that well, you've owned that you have a bunch of money made in. Yeah. But let's say that just for the sake of argument, that he has a million dollars in Apple. I think it's multiples of that. But let's say he had a million. How many multiples is it? <laughs> it's a lot. But I, I drive a pickup truck, man. I, I, I don't just care like about Warren Buffett. Uh, yeah, yeah. So let's say you have a million dollars of any stock, yeah, Apple, yeah, let's yeah, say, yeah, or yeah, Disney or yeah, whatever. Yeah. I can collect rent just like Grant collects yeah, rent. Right. Because when he collects rent, he buys a big real estate place and he says, hey, John, it's 92% occupied or even 100, some of your deals 95, and things. 95. 95. 95. 95% 95. occupied. Okay, so he's collecting rent every single month. With Apple, Pete yeah. can collect rent every single week because of the call. You're yep. Sell he's going to sell an, an upside call uh -huh. against his holding, his core holding of Apple, and he just gets revenue in every week. He can either just is reinvest that, is that earned you, income. You you create that, a dividend stream by doing what you're doing. Yeah. Here. So they already have a dividend as well. Right. Right. But if you sell, if you own a thousand shares, you sell ten of these for a dollar, you take in a thousand bucks. Uh huh. And if you can do that, is that, is that considered earned income? How what, do they what tax kind of income that? Short-term right? capital gains. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Yep. Yeah. That's why but I live in Puerto do. Rico. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, when are we going to be launching this, guys? When, 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 when can the audience do something with this? When can the people that follow me? 78% of our clients are investing in the stock market right now, actually involved in uh, your, probably your own management of the money. Unfortunately, investing in the stock market is, is not my area of expertise. It never has been. I guess if I would have started learning the way you guys did, I'd know what you know now. You'll know you'll know that pretty soon. Good. So we're going to create an account for me. You guys are going to be able to follow along. Uh, these guys have 40 years of Wall Street. And not just Wall Street experience, but going on TV every day saying, this is our trade. Yep. These guys are considered some of the most trusted and well-respected investors on Wall Street today. And we are announcing a partnership, Market Rebellion, Pete. John, Grant Cardone, my clients and community will, will have the benefit of priceless, their priceless expertise, watching them help me learn the game. So if you're interested in learning how to invest, manage your risk, grow your portfolio, you want liquidity by using the stock market, you want to learn about calls and options and derivatives, mm. I'll get this, I'll get this. <laughs> what risk really is, what's risk to you, it's probably a different, different definition for everybody. Is that right? Yeah. 
Yep. yep. Um, How to again. take advantage of the squeeze. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to squeeze somebody, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And there, I tell you what, uh, we spoke of it earlier. Um, there is no better feeling uh, with all your clothes on than you can make money in the stock market. Yeah, yeah. Because you you're beating enough. some of the smartest people out there. Yeah. And all you've got to do is be disciplined. Dude. Just understand the game. Be disciplined. It's like applause. Yeah. It's like when he was in front of 100,000 people playing for, you know, the Vikings or Tampa Bay or whatever. That's how it feels yeah, yeah. when you have those winning trades on just yeah. every so, day. So but I remember, be, they're not all going to be winners. Uh, you, yeah, you yeah. Well, play. there's going to be a winner. Right. There's, there's going to be a winner every time. Win, yep. There's going to be a loser there. Yep, absolutely. So you, you, I could actually trade against, like, a, I could make a trade on a Bill Ackman. Yep, sure. Or a Mark Cuban. Absolutely. You bet. No, yeah. no one I'm, do I know it's him? Well, I could because he's public, right? He's pretty public. And about a lot it. of these guys have almost a blueprint of who it is making the trade because they like certain numbers and all that. It sounds uh -huh. crazy, but uh -huh. it really is true. You see it all the time. Yeah, you, you see their, their genetic <laughs> DNA little <laughs> the DNA right. all over it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, look, the largest investors in the world actively trade in the markets every single day, generating cash flow in addition to their hold, this is what yep. you were talking about with Apple Stop, yep. to mitigate the risk of their investments. And now through our partnership with Market Rebellion, I'm so excited about this, uh, the 10X community, you guys, can now get access to the same tr uh, trading strategies used by some of the largest players in the world, like the Buffets and the Ken Griffins, Steve Cohen, David Tepper, Mark Cuban, uh, Warren Buffett. Did I say Warren? Of course. I got to say Warren twice, sure. though. Yeah, it's all right. Um, He's worth it. You know Munger's <laughs> probably trading from heaven right he now. Probably, he might be. You know, he he's might got be. Any excited. Um, and, and, and so this is going to be a great thing that we're going to do here. I hope you guys get involved with this. My team's going to set up a landing page. So you're going to be able to have access to these guys on a daily um, you're doing a show here. You're going to do a show here today. Yeah, we are. How often? The do Rebel's do that? Edge. We do it Monday through Thursday. Yeah. At 1 p.m. Eastern time. So, uh, 1 p.m. We talk about macro for one minute. We macro don't waste meaning your time. broad market. It's the big broad side What's, of the market. The economy's yeah. terrible, or or, <laughs> yeah. or, or what is the or trigger people, to it? Or, right? Like the macro. A macro yeah. thing yeah. is. I think this would be macro. Hey, people are starting to sign up for Netflix's. Yeah. Uh, ad platform yeah. tells suggests to me that the yeah. the consumer's weak yeah yep. that's what it suggests to me i don't or is that micro or macro that that would be well I, you're taking it from macro all the way down to micro yeah yeah but that's cool yeah yeah, yeah and that's yeah, yeah. what is a trigger for people to say what do you hey maybe i want to pay attention to consumers that are yeah. not willing to pay the extra ten dollars a month for the free net, yeah. or for the no ad Netflix, I want to not pay as much, but I'm willing to suffer through some ads. Great example today would be this. It's it's a little bit of my, it's micro, but it's also macro. Walmart okay. had earnings today. Uh -huh. Why is that macro? Because why why are they doing so much better now ever since the pandemic? Because so many people have become parts of Walmart, spending uh -huh. money at Walmart, uh -huh. actually going back there. And we're talking about people who actually have higher and higher and higher, you know, the, their income levels are that much higher. Uh -huh. Why are they going to Walmart? Because they went there, they found it to be a pretty good experience. It's not as bad as what, whatever they may be projected in their head. Uh -huh. And their numbers are absolutely outstanding. Today. They are, huh? Yep, yep. And yep. their online numbers just blew up. So, yep. so you know, so Starbucks, it's a trade Starbucks down. numbers are bad right now. Terrible. McDonald's was terrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you make sense of the Walmart? It's the same consumer. Who's making, yeah, but as a consumer, you go to, you go to, uh, uh, any of those Starbucks who whoever they're five bucks for a coffee, right? Yeah, you go walking around in there, and you you've got you know your your dollar amounts have come down. You're not seeing as bad in, in terms of the inflation, right? Uh -huh. We all see the inflation; it's everywhere. But at least at Walmart, people have a little bit better shot at being able to use uh -huh. a little bit more of the money that they've got to get more in the cart. Uh -huh. And I, I wonder how's Costco doing. It makes Costco me think does Costco. generally. They do generally pretty daggone good. See, I yep. think Costco wins. It's the subscription model that helps. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. The reoccurring because revenue model. Sam's Clubs. I was going to say they got Sam's. Also work out pretty because well because they can't buy a home. I can't buy a new home. I'm stuck in this this three and a half percent interest rate home. Mm -hmm. I can't. I thought I was going to be buying a new one by now. I yep. can't. So I got to fix it up. Yep. Yep. So, so how, how 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 does that bigger view influence your 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 what, what our investments gonna, yeah so like for instance are you, you yeah but that's an investment it's not a trade yeah but that's okay i mean like for instance i'll give you two trades right yeah. now one if interest rates don't go down for a while if they yeah. stay high 
like they are right now, relatively for high. how long? You're talking um, about? Let's say they stay like this for at least a year before okay. the Fed cuts. Okay. Because they're not going to want to cut into the election uh -huh. because they're almost like they're skewing the election towards the incumbent, towards uh -huh. Biden. So they to if, big dick, big dick Donald. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So um, I would say J.P. Morgan's one of the best plays if really? you think that uh -huh. we're going to stay flat on because, interest rates because. rather than dropping down, because. They make money on wealth management. They make money on uh, deposited funds because they're not going to give you all of that 5% that the 30-year money's trading right, at right, right now. Right. They're going to give you two. Uh -huh. and they're, So they make uh -huh. the spread between what they pay depositors and what they charge. Do you like J.P. Morgan? I do. Do you like J.P. Morgan, right? I do for a slightly different reason uh, yeah. off the topic of what you were saying, yeah. but investment banking. You guys are going to have access to this. Can you imagine <laughs> having access to this data? So you like it? I like them because of uh, investment banking. And when you look back and you say 2023, you know what we didn't have in 2023? We didn't have IPOs. They uh -huh. stopped. They almost went completely dried up. Uh -huh. This year, they're on fire. They are. And that's feeding into it, the margins they get from that. Yeah. Why is Goldman Sachs at all-time highs? Not 52-week highs, all-time highs. Uh -huh. Why is J.P. Morgan all-time highs? Why is Citi running from 38 bucks up to 65 bucks? Because of the fact that all these guys are involved in investment banking, they're getting that margin that they get, and it helps from, from the standpoint of they've got all these IPOs. Right. Not and all these bank, IPOs are huge money. and savings, but from the IPO. The, yeah. And but, from mergers. Like, yeah, you want to buy something. Yep. You want to uh, buy another got, company got and put it under Cardone yeah, Industries. Yeah, got it. I like um, that idea. I like the way you think. <laughs> he so, likes that so, idea. But the community <laughs> banks and the regional banks are all freaking slaughtered still yeah. right now. They're, they're, they're still dangerous. All-time lows, right? They're still very, very dangerous. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, we they did, took one out. We had a collapse a week like ago. a week ago, and nobody even talked about it because it's, it's not interesting public. anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. Well, um, what, other, what other trades do you like? So, to the down, if you think rates are going to start going down, yeah. you spoke about it already. Yeah. Um, there's a stock called Builders Supply, B L D R. Yeah. yeah. Orange, okay, so orange, you, orange Company. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could go to. <laughs> Um, they, they, they got yeah. an orange logo. Oh, yeah. Orange logo. You, you go to Home Depot, and that's something for your garden, yeah. something for your home, something from hardware and all that kind of stuff. But if you go to Builder, that's all they do uh -huh. is stuff for building and construction. So will building and construction pick up if interest rates drop? Yes. Yeah, you like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Like I like that, and I'd also add to that by saying there's so many derivatives of something like that that yeah. come off to me right. in my head. Right. Right. Copper. Uh -huh. because copper is everywhere, right? That is yeah. a huge thing that people need. And if they're going to be doing some of this stuff, well, keep an eye on the price of copper. And then all of a sudden you go over and look at some of the biggest names in copper and say, you know what? Maybe this thing does have a chance to go a little higher. Freeport McMoran. Uh -huh. Maybe this thing skies up, which it's been doing. Yeah. There's always something after yeah. something after what something. What else? What, what tech stocks do you like right now? Um, I still like a lot of the stocks that support the AI infrastructure. So in other words, I can't even get Siri to understand me. <laughs> well, just, so there's an example. Apple is getting heavier I asked AI. It, call my wife. Call my wife, and it called another woman. Today. Oh, that's like, probably oh. not good. No, dude. I'm like, what the hell's going on here, man? Can't you guys understand this? My my my, my Cajun or whatever it is. Like, well. Apple's getting heavier into it, right? Okay. They knew they were behind the curve, so they're but they've got however many hundred billion dollars. They're not going to invest all that, but they're going to invest in uh -huh. making Siri better, making what they do better as far as maps and all the rest for you. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say Apple um, is going to invest there. Micron because it's memory, uh -huh. um, super microcomputer or uh, that one SMCI because they make the racks that all the AI uh -huh. you know, uh, servers are going to be sitting mm -hmm. in and all that. There's a lot of ways to play AI other than just NVIDIA. Yeah. yeah. Same? Yeah, I like a lot of those names. I'd also even throw in there a name that nobody else likes for the most part, but uh, Meta, right? Uh -huh. I mean, uh, everybody's so against Facebook. They really hate this guy Zuckerberg and everything else, and they have their reasons that might be right or not. But I always look at it. I've owned that one, uh, Grant, since the IPO itself. Wow, $19. And uh, yeah, well, when, when I think I think it was launch, wasn't it 38. I think well, yeah, 38. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, was the number. And then, right, then they right. had to hold it up for a while. Then it crashed down, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. now it's done pretty well. Yeah. But everybody Four still hates today. They, they yeah they still hate the guy, and and so they had their most recent earnings. The stock dropped significantly to the downside, and now it's just been going a little bit higher and a little bit higher. They trade very inexpensively. We always talk about price to earnings as a measurement of of expense. 
They trade very inexpensively right now. They still are, and they've got ungodly cash. The cash flow there is off the charts. Uh -huh. I love that name. Right now, Grant, I'd say one of the places to be with data, like Pete was talking about, whether it's Meta, which is the former Facebook, or whether it's Google, all this data gets developed every day. Every single time you answer your phone, every time you walk by a department store with your phone, it knows where you are. It's sending that data somewhere, yeah. and chances are uh, that data is being analyzed. Well, you got to have data centers for that. Yeah, um, you're talking about huge big data industrial. Center. Yeah. Huge. Taking yeah. up acres and acres. Exactly. An empty warehouse. Could be a real estate play. Could be yeah. a real estate play. Well, <laughs> so from the real estate side of things, you know, this is a guy that knows real estate better than anybody that we know and probably one of the best in the world at analyzing this is how much cash flow I'm going to get out of this property, John. Um, I can buy it for this. I'm not going to leverage it up. I'm going to get in here and own this thing. Well, so why not Vertiv? VRT. VRT is a company that, what do they do? Uh, you've obviously, just like you with the REITs, um, this is a company that just owns data centers. Wow. So it's not for um, they own the people to live in. It, or they, yep, they that, just own the data center itself? Uh, the building. Uh -huh, they the care building. about the building um, uh -huh. and building out that uh, data center for AI, uh -huh. which does what then? It analyzes the data. Um, that AI is out there looking at the data and they need tons wow. and tons of all those it's servers in there. This year. Not bad. <laughs> it's not bad, it's right? Decent huh? year. It's not <laughs> bad, right? <laughs> I'd have to be in a real estate deal for like a century. Five hundred percent in a year. I mean, you look at uh, Nvidia. By the way, beginning of the year, I think it was below four hundred. Mm -hmm. Pete um, went to almost a thousand, mm -hmm. like that. Amazing. Um, so they called this the Nvidia derivative. Meaning yep. what? It's an offshoot of this industry. It's servicing the the, the Nvidia's, the AI plays. Of, yep, of the absolutely. Universe. Just uh -huh. like Arm Holdings, ARM is uh, along with Micron. Those are like the uh, memory for those uh, centers and so forth. Mm -hmm. Anytime you're going to try to analyze all this data and do it relatively quickly. That's why the speed of those chips is so important. They've got to cool these big buildings down, uh -huh. you know, because data centers get hot. Uh -huh. A lot of them are using liquid cooling. Have you been in one it. of these buildings before? Yes, sir. What, what's in them? Um, servers, just racks of no servers. No toilets. Box. No, no toilets. No humans. <laughs> no humans. <laughs> no, no. Right? And they're no probably need. guarded. Cool, dude. Uh, you know, very, very. So uh, I, know, I know the strip in Phoenix, Arizona, going to the airport. That terrible, uh, like ugly drive over to the Phoenix Airport, not Scottsdale Airport, like was just this empty land for years, and now I think they put up I don't know some 10 million square feet of servers, nothing but servers. So, <laughs> yeah, crazy. and probably solar running those. I bet the roof of that place uh -huh. looks all black uh -huh. from uh, solar and all that. Um, solar, it's it's not where it needs to be yet because of course it's only useful during the day. Uh -huh. They can charge batteries with it, or they can pump water uphill with it that they can use at night to turn turbines and things like that. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the problems with, uh, you know, a lot of the green energy right now is they don't have battery storage that's big enough. So that's going to be a play going forward. Who's, who makes the best batteries? Right now, Tesla makes some of the best batteries, but you need even bigger batteries. We talked to a couple firms that we're involved with that are small firms right now, but they're going to be big, uh -huh. like this BioLargo. They have a battery component that's like, you know, I think it's going to be a killer app because you need big storage for the energy that you create during the day, whether it's wind, whether it's waves, whether it's solar, whether it's geothermal. you got to store that energy somewhere. Use it or lose it because uh -huh. otherwise it just, you know. And that's gone. why you need memory. And John mentioned Micron, but I even threw out their Western Digital, which never gets talked about by anybody. It's a lost, lost leader, but they are killing it. And so is Seagate to some degree is also killing it. So, so there's all these names, names that I grew up, up with, man. Right. I, know all I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. They're going to come back and become new yep. companies. Yep. And Micron was left for dead. Uh -huh. Micron was left for dead. That was a stock that I was yeah, a specialist MU, right? in. Yeah, MU, yeah. out of Idaho. They went all the way up to maybe 100 and something, fell all the way back down into damn near single digits, and then made this big run uh -huh. over the last period of time, last year or two, where it's just scored to the upside as well. So, look, guys, there's a lot to learn. 
it's a big, big industry. Like there's, I don't know, uh, trillions of dollars are being made every day in the stock market. Every day, not every year, every month, every week, every day. single day. Trillions of dollars are being traded worldwide. And I'm just so excited uh, that Pete, John, and myself are doing this together. I'm going to be the student learning. These guys are going to be the professors, the teachers. <laughs> They've proven themselves highly experienced on TV every day for years. Um, so I'm super excited to bring this to the 10X community. If you're a trader, want to be a trader, want to learn about derivatives, puts, options, calls, squeezes. <laughs> you know, He's got it all down already. No, I will. Dude. You know why? Because when I commit to something, I'm going to learn how to yep. play the game. Yep. I'm going to learn how to play the game, and I'm going to learn the language, and I'm going to quit just trashing something because I don't understand it, which is what I've done for years. I don't understand it, so I'm not going to play the game. So I'm really cool. you know, grateful that you guys are willing to do this with me and help our community. Um, I'm just super, super excited. We're looking forward to it, folks. Make sure you check out the links. And uh, Grant, can't thank you yeah, enough. Man. Yeah, and, and uh, we got a few more minutes just for other stuff. Uh, are there any similarities between what's happening with stocks here and, let's say, real estate? Like, what, 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 are, the, what are the similarities that I can lean on? Well, um, so when interest rates are going up, it really affects the NASDAQ stocks a lot. Why? Because they borrow a lot. Look uh -huh. at how many hundreds of billions of dollars Apple has borrowed at very low interest yeah. rates. Now all of a sudden rates go up, they can't borrow that. Yeah. Yeah. They've got to eat down through their cash hoard yeah. rather than... W why did they just buy $110 billion worth of their own stock back? <laughs> Because that's what they do. But why not go buy? Why not go buy some of these other companies? They I, can't find a better, something better to invest in than. But than, that's a great question, yeah. and I think the answer is no. They actually think that their stock is undervalued because of the the lack of movement that it's had this year, 2024. Uh -huh. Think about that. When you look at where did it start the year? Where is it right now? And then all of a sudden you look at Nvidia. Where was that? Where was you know SMCI? Any of these various names? Apple has lagged, and it and it got up to close to 200 and then it eased all the way back into the 170s again and now back into the mid 180s but nonetheless it, it they feel like that stock has plenty of room still uh, to the upside so I think they view that as the better investment what what are the 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 similarities so I have a base point to, to edu you know look from what are the similarities between real estate and investing well, or in your case trading all right well one of them would be that uh, uh, you can own real estate on the stock side of the world. In other words, without ever buying a piece of dirt, yeah. a building, or anything else, you can own a REIT, for instance. Right. Yours are privately held. Uh, there are publicly traded REITs, which means anybody watching this could buy that particular REIT mm -hmm. they could, and then sell calls against it. Mm -hmm. So they could, for instance, have a REIT that's paying a yield of 4.5%. With the strategy Pete just described about Apple, they could sell call options against that REIT and turn that into 15%, I'm gonna get into 17%. This shit, dude. I'm gonna get, yeah, you're going to love at, this. I'm looking at Starwood right now. Starwood, <laughs> on it. Starwood traded down to, because I know they got issues going on. So they, <laughs> la, 2020, this is after COVID, it went down to $10. It's at 20 bucks today. Mm -hmm. And I just know they have a whole portfolio like, the other thing that I would say... Just I didn't mean to, to interrupt you. No, 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 no not but, at all. But just to add on to what John was just talking about is, think of this, because you talked about it earlier, liquidity. Mm -hmm. You're in the real estate market, you don't always have liquidity. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And the options in the stock market, we have liquidity. Yeah. It's going to be able to trade, so yeah. that gives you one leg up. Right. And then you're, you, you buy the stock, the REIT, and you're getting also that huge dividend yields that they normally have, but you're creating even more by enhancing and selling calls options against it. Now, all of a sudden, something that was giving you maybe a 6% yield, maybe you've turned it into a 10 or 12% yield uh -huh. just by selling an out-of-the-money call that you buy back. Sell it for a dollar, buy it back for 20 cents, sell the next month out for a dollar, buy it back for whatever. That whatever strategy Does it get it boring just making no, money man. like this? No, no that never, never gets That's boring. fun no. money, man. That's, uh -huh. like, that's like taking candy from a, ba a baby. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the, the fact that... The glee uh, I see in your eye when, you, when I asked him. And I love babies, this by the way. I got a grandson who just turned a buck. So, uh -huh. yeah, he's good. <laughs> when, when you have the opportunity to trade stocks, and as you mentioned, trillions of dollars back and forth every day in the stock market, 
hundreds of billions of dollars back and forth every day in the options market. When you can access that kind of liquidity grant um, for your folks that love real estate already, yeah. and then they say, you know what, I really love real estate, I understand it because Grant and his team have done a great job selling me on yeah, this yeah, yeah, and yeah. educating me on it. Yeah. You can do the same thing in options, um, taking advantage of Starwood, taking advantage of any of these big REITs, and again, trading what you know, and then enhancing it with that yield, like Pete said, turn that five and a half, six percent yield into 12 or 14. Now you're doubling your money yeah. twice as fast just yeah. by doing that. Well, you guys have me really thinking right now, because even back to the conversation earlier about Warren taking the position in Chubb, yeah. I knew this, I knew this last year because we watched our insurance premiums go from four million to 14 million a year. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Somebody's making money. On Somebody's this. making oh, yeah. money. And I knew it, dude. It was there. It was right there. I, and I think just for the audience, like you guys, are, are, every day you're seeing something move. And you might not be paying attention to it because you haven't made a commitment to your education. So I'm looking super forward to educating you guys, learning in the process, being one of you. And we'll create an account, guys. I love this idea. We'll create an account. You guys can start showing me what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And we'll track what worked and what didn't work. I look forward to this um, oh, great, great partnership, to too. Okay? Thanks, guys. Thank you, Grant. Thanks for coming in. Yeah.